Hey now, what's going on guys? It's Real Touch GML here back with another tutorial for you guys. This is number five in our Let's Build a Game in Java series. And today we've got some pretty exciting stuff on our list. Today we're gonna be looking at collision. We're gonna be looking at, you know, when you do collide, bringing down that health. Uh, the, on the health bar that we made last, uh, last tutorial, we're gonna look at creating a cool little particle effect for our enemies so it's not just a box uh, go, uh, bouncing around. And uh, we're all, if we have time, we're gonna look at creating like a little bit more to our heads up display system, such as, you know, a wave system, a score system, all of that fun stuff, right? So let's go ahead and get right onto it. First thing we're gonna do is collision. So let me go ahead and run the game now. And let's see what we've got so far. We've got, you know, a health bar, we've got a box, uh, and we can move our uh, player here, and all is dandy. So now what happens is, if you come in contact with that red box, your health will go down. That's all we're gonna do. So this is a little bit easier said than done. Uh, it's not that difficult, uh, it just requires a method here and uh, we should be all set. So in our game object class, we're gonna create one more method and we're gonna say public abstract rectangle get bounds. And we're going to control shift O to import rectangle. Basically, we're going to be using rectangles to um, basically handle all the collision because within our Java libraries, we have a uh, the rectangle class within the Jerry has a method in it called dot. Uh, well, you'd be it would you be using the dot operator intersects method, which basically handles if two re uh, rectangles intersect each other, it will return true. So let me just go ahead and go to paint real quick. So basically we have, a, let's say we have a rectangle here. Okay, we have a rectangle here. Since they're not intersecting, that intersects method would return false. But say for example, we came in a little bit closer and here was our rectangles now, that intersects method would then return true. And we can use this intersects method to obviously judge whether you're colliding or not. Um, so anytime you have two rectangles that you know intersect each other, it's going to return true, which is very, very handy, especially because within our game we're using, uh, we're using rectangles, which is even better. So we, we will get the perfect collision. Now, say for example, you had something along the lines of like a circular object, Okay, it doesn't take into account the actual sprite or object that we put in. Um, so if you were to do like a circle like that, obviously if we made the rectangle, the collision bounds would still be here. So if, if say we had like a circle and then we had like another square like that, forget these squares over here. And as you can see, it's kind of intersecting right here. That would return true as a collision, even though we're not actually, that rectangle is not actually intersecting with the circle. Um, but since we're creating, we're basically creating like an alternate uh, rectangle bound, bounding type of, uh, it's, it's like the mask. If you ever use Game Maker, there's a mask system in there. And we're, we're basically using the mask, uh, this rectangle as the mask. So, um, so here's like, we can have like our normal image here, and then we're gonna create our bounds method to be the exact same dimension, so it's gonna look like it's actually colliding with our image, but it's really colliding with the bound systems that we create for our image. So if you had like a stick figure, like that, right, as, as your graphic, it gets a little bit more complicated because if you just use the rectangle method, that would be our entire collision bound right there. So no matter if it collides, you know, here, or um, you know, just maybe like a pointy object here, even though it's not touching the player, the get bounds method or you know our bounding that we've created returns true for a collision. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's go ahead and continue on with it. So we're gonna create that method there. So you see, we get errors in our player and basic enemy class. That's because we made an abstract another abstract method, which means we're gonna need we're gonna need it with our player class and all game objects. So public rectangle get bounds. 
All right, and obviously since it's a rectangle, we need to return a rectangle value. So I'm going to return a new rectangle at our x, y, and then our width and height. So that is basically our bounds right there. So if I copy this and I go into basic enemy and I paste it, but instead of 32 by 32, I put 16 by 16. Um, that now returns a rectangle with the exact x, y, and width and height of our object. So we can actually see this rectangle bounding that I just created. Uh, if I go ahead, we can actually draw it out. So I need to convert our graphics in uh, g equals new. Wait, no, no, no. What is it? Graphics 2D equals new graphics g right something like that let's see um graphics 2d equals new graphics 2d uh so, something like that hold on well, let me let me look at it. all right we just need to cast it over we don't need to create a new graphics of it so there we are so we just need to use the graphics 2D method. So this is basically just creating our graphics uh, G method and just ca uh, casting it into a new variable of graphics 2D, which graphics 2D just has the method that we need uh, that graphics doesn't. So again, this is just to show you the collision boundings. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to actually do this. So we can say G dot set color color dot. We'll say green, and I could say G dot draw rectangle and then inside here I could say get bounds and this would actually be g2d oh, actually it would just be draw yeah there we go alright so if we go ahead and run it now as you can see there we go so now we have a outlined green box that is basically our collision bounding so if I went ahead and still just drew like a rectangle that we normally create, and that's kind of hard to see. Um, let's do, if we make this um, red, let's see if that's better. And you can kind of see it, it it's kind of in there. But um, yeah, so basically that rectangle completely surrounds our rectangle. All right, which is pretty cool, but we don't need that. It's not necessary to have that in there. All right, so basic any enemy, same thing, uh, just you know, circles around it. So now what we need to do is in our tick method, we need to actually, you know what, we need to create an instance of our handler class and put it into our constructor, handler, handler, this.handler equals handler. And that means in our game object, since we spawn it, we need to pop in the parameters of handler. Now remember, you're gonna you're gonna get an error if you put this spawning inst uh, code above our handler class because again we're using handler within the parameters. But if it's not yet created, we can't use it. But it's already created because again code compiles from top to bottom. All right. So now that we have that, we can now use this handler class in our in our method here. So what I'm going to do is I let, let me just call a new class or a new method collision just to kind of clean things up. Technically, you could do this in uh, you could do this in the tick method, but I'm just going to put it in here just because it's a little bit cleaner. And here we're going to run through all the objects once again. I is less than handler dot object dot size I plus plus. All right. And here we are going to create a game object all right and then we are going to say if well actually you know what, let's equal temp object to equal handler dot object dot get i and we'll say if temp object dot get id equals id dot basic enemy then in here, we're going to put the collision code. So here we're now going to say um, if 
get bounds dot intersects with our temp object dot get bounds and actually you no know, let's put this down here because that is technically the collision code so anything we put in this code now is going to happen um, when we collide with it so in our heads up display since we made that a static method what we can do and let's get rid of that is in our player class we can say hud dot health minus equals two and that is basically it so let's go and run the game um, let's see here and we're getting we're getting why are I not seeing the object oh there it is I don't know what happened just then maybe it's oh it might have spawned outside of the room or something like that all right so here we have our health and if we collide with it whoa our health now goes down check that out so we collide with it whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. our health now goes down all right so let, let me explain this a little bit further so I mean this is basically the same for when we were drawing all of our objects and stuff out uh, and also I saw in the comments how some guys were just using uh, different types of for loops I find this to be the easiest to understand um, you know obviously you can use the other stuff if you'd like if that's easier for you but uh, I find this the easiest to understand so I'm gonna just stick with this anyways so we're running through all the objects in the game we're then creating a temporary object and this is getting each instance of our for loop then we're saying okay so if our temp object that get ID is our basic enemy so right in whatever's in this code here is basically dealing with the enemy okay and then we're gonna say if our get bounds which returns a rectangle which is the same as saying if our rectangle XY 3232 intersects with our temp object I remember everything that deals in here since we've now passed this code temp object can now be referenced as temp object is now basic enemy you can kind of look at it like that so we say temp object that get bounds we've already made the get bounds in our uh, basic enemy which is 16 by 16 width and height so if it gets bound get bounds that intersects that's that intersect method what I was telling you in paint uh, then our hud dot health minus equals two which I put in here um, that we did last uh, tutorial so pretty simple actually I think so we'll go and run it again and then I can kind of stick with it and again our health is clamped so we can't go any any less than that so there you go we now have health that can go oh that can go up and down all right so now let's go ahead and go with the trail so let me go ahead and do that so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new uh, new class real quick and this is going to be called uh, basic trail you know let's just call it trail and in our ID let's just create a new ID trail all right and this is gonna be pretty simple uh, we're gonna extend game object again just cause we're gonna be making a lot of them now I know there's better ways to do this this is the again this is going to be probably the, the easiest way to look at it and I haven't really experienced any lag issues or anything like that maybe if you get thousands of these on the screen uh, you're gonna start running into a little bit of lag but you should be fine so we're gonna there's no collision bounds with the trail so we can just return that to null and we're never gonna use that and uh, all that stuff so let's go ahead and create a quick variable private int alpha or no this needs to be a float alpha this is just gonna equal to one and in here we need to in our constructor we need to bring in our handler because what we're going to need to do is basically when our trail ends or you know when they're we're basically going to take here, here's the thing with the trail we're going to be creating this trail every step or every tick in our basic enemy and this trail it's not going to move or anything at all but it's going to, all it's going to do is just take its alpha value of one and then slowly subtract that so it looks like it's fading out into the distance once it finally just fades out then we just destroy it completely because we don't need it anymore so 
With that, we're going to need to create one method here. And this is going to be private alpha composite. And we're going to call it make transparent. And in here, we're going to need a float. And we're just going to call it alpha. And you need a control shift to import alpha composite. And in here, we're going to create an int type. And this is going to equal alpha composite dot src underscore over. All right. And then right then we're just going to return our alpha composite dot get instance. And in here, we're going to say type and alpha. And that's basically the method that is going to be able to uh, render out like these transparencies in the uh, objects, right? So in our render method, we need to convert our graphics 2D G2D because we can only use this uh, alpha composite with our G2D variables here. And again, we're just gonna do the same thing, graphics 2D G. And also in, in the trail, let's just create a quick color just so we can use the trail over and over again. Because we're gonna have different enemies with different colors that do different things. So we can reuse this trail. So if we, we can just put in the color that we want with that. So here we're just going to say g2d.setComposite. And in this, we, are, we will say make transparent alpha. And then we can just basically say g.setColor, color, and g.fillRect, x, y, 16, 16. We could even go one step further if we really, I don't, I'm not sure what different objects we can make, but we can even put it in a width and a height. Private int width height. This dot width equals width. This dot height equals height. And then inside here, we could put width and height. So say for example, we have an enemy that's 32 by 32. We can make the corresponding trail. All right, and then what we need to do is after this, you need to copy this code again, paste it below and put one because we basically want to sandwich in um, our alpha and our one. So basically everything underneath here is going to be what our alpha is and then everything after that is going to be to a, a, a solid one alpha because if you don't put that there, it's basically going to screw some things up along the line because we're going to, um, oh, let me put a comma there. We, It's going to make other things transparent that we don't want to be transparent and all that stuff. So make sure you just put that there and it'll save you a lot of issues. All right, so yeah, that should be good. Uh, we can even test this a lot with um, other stuff. We can also, let's do this. Let's create one more variable and we'll call this life. Int life. This dot life equals life. And you can kind of make this however you'd like, but we can say like life can be a value between zero um, like 0 0.01 and 0.1 I guess so in here we're just going to say if alpha is greater than 0 0.1 or is greater than life yeah we'll say that alpha minus equals life minus 0 0.001 Try that. And then else, and then this is where the handler comes in. Handler dot remove object this. Pretty simple. I guess. So let me tell you kind of 
kind of what the life is is basically we're just saying if so if we put like the smaller the number the longer the life of our particle is going to be so if we go ahead and go into our basic enemy here actually you know let's just go into the player since we have handle already made no no we'll do basic yeah let's create an instance of the handler so private handler handler put it in here handler handler this dot handler equals handler and so in our tick method all we're gonna do is we're just gonna again constantly create uh, this object so add object new trail X Y and then let's see the color is going to be color dot red um, the width is going to be 16 height 16 and then what else did we need here the life right so we're gonna say the life is 0 0.01 uh, no let's just do 0 0 1 now and then handler All right, that should be good let's see um, oh we need the ID right ID dot trail what else oh right let's we need to make this a float which means there we go we need to make the life variable float because it's gonna be And then inside here, we need to obviously put the handler because we're using that. All right, so let's run it. See what happens. Ah, there we go. Oh, and we get an error. Let's see, a null pointer in trail. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's try that. Try that one more time. <laughs> and now it's not going down. Let's try that again. Hmm, interesting. Let me let me diagnose this and I will be right back. All oh, right. See that wasn't too difficult. I never actually said this dot handler equals handler. And that's a common mistake. You better look for that. So let's try that again. Ah, there we go. And now you can see a trail going about its business. So if we go to the basic enemy, we put this trail down to say 0 0.1. As you can see, the trail is now a lot smaller. But if we say like 0 0.05, let's try that. That's still kind of 0 0.08. Oh wait, hold on, we need to go down. 0 0.02 now that looks like a good trail right there I like that so let's put let's put a couple into the game here we'll copy this and I, you can do the for loop but I'm just gonna put a couple in so as you can see you now have a madness of trails and you can dodge them and you actually now have a little game here which is pretty cool um, yeah, I mean, like, you can even, like, this trail, we can say, for example, you want it on the player. Just put it on the player. So just do, we can just do, here, I'll copy this. Copy that. Paste it there. Color it out white. And, yeah, let's try that. Oh, hold on. We need to put the width and height to 32, 32. And check that out <laughs> we now have a little trail in the player we might want that trail to be a little bit 0.05 and there you go the trails a little better now check that out so now we have a cool little weird 
traily looking game. <laughs> so, I think that's going to be it for today. Go and like, go and subscribe. If you need me to go back in any of this code, I know it was a little bit fast. You can go ahead and rewatch the video. Let me know. Um, and again, the trail thing, not as efficient as you know you could possibly make it. But I, again, I'm not running into any issues here. Everything looks fine and dandy. So go leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's try for 100 likes this time. And uh, I will, of course, see you guys in the next video.